Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's get started. This is chapter 2, part 2, and we will continue with marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve, and we will learn all about it. Okay, so we're again continuing with the utility maximization. Now we're building up the utility function, right? We talked about utility function, indifference curves. We're talking about indifference curves. And next, we're going to talk about budget constraint. But before that, let us get started. Marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve. And also, it's the rate at which a consumer is willing to trade off the two goods. Okay, so cakes and movies example. If you remember, right, we had cakes here on the y-axis. We had movies on the x-axis, right? So this is x-axis. I don't know why I am. <laughs> I don't know why I am whispering. There's no one here. I'm in my um, production, you know, studio. All right. So cakes and movies example. So margin rate of substitution will tell you how many cakes would you give up to have one more movie. So it shows you how many of whatever you have on the y-axis you're willing to give up. To have just one more of whatever you have on the x-axis. Okay. So let's take a look at this uh, indifference curve example. Remember points A and B. Indifference curve 1. So we said that the marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve. So this indifference curve is a curve, right? It's not a, a linear straight line. So the slope is going to change. So for instance, marginal rate of substitution... At bundle A is its slope. So it's this little bit fainter red. I'm trying to find it. It's I'm going to grab a different color. It's a fainter, you know, this little, I call it ghost line. <laughs> little ghost line. Look at the slope of this line. So the slope of this line, ghost line, is going to be the slope at point A. So how do you find it? So you are looking for slope of this curve at point A, find a line that is tangent. Tangent means it's touching at one point. At exactly at that point, you're trying to find slope. Okay, so slope in absolute value. So this is downward sloping is always negative. So just, just real quick rule for you. If a slope of a line like this, this is a negative slope, shows a negative relationship. You know, y and x, just general two things. My x's looks like um, y's and my y sometimes looks like x's. So I'm going to make it like this. So it looks like a, hopefully y. So if there's a negative relationship, this is a y. Negative relationships, downward sloping. And positive relationship, upward sloping. Okay. So here it's, it's going to be a negative sign, but... It's a pretty steep line, right? So at point B, find a line that is tangent. That means touching at point B only. My drawing is horrible. So I'm glad my career is not in arts because I'm not good at drawing straight lines. However, I, I think I can paint pretty well. But All right, let's go back to our subject. So marginal uh, rate of substitution at bundle B is the slope of this line. So as you can see, sorry about that. Uh, so slope of this line. So as you can see, this, this line, the slope at point B is flatter. So it's smaller in absolute terms. So this is a steeper slope, right? Absol in absolute value. Absolute value means get rid of the negative sign. So this is a steeper slope in absolute value, larger slope. This is a smaller slope. That means at point B, right, you are willing to give up fewer cakes, whatever you have in y-axis, for movies, one more movie, compared to point A. Point A, you are willing to give up a lot of cakes, steeper slope, to get one more movie. Okay, so let's take a look at point C. This is totally different in difference curve. It looks like the slope is right here, right? Marginal rate of substitution at bundle C appears to be larger than B, but smaller than A. Okay, so it's in the middle. All right. So marginal rate of substitution is diminishing 
in absolute terms as we move down along an indifference curve. So I'm going to actually draw mine. <laughs> I'm going to draw mine here. Oops. Let's draw this. Okay, so let's, this is the cakes and movies. Right, so I'm going to draw the indifference curve a little bit thicker. This is my indifference curve. I see one. That's called I see one indifference curve one. Okay, so I'm going to grab a different color. Okay, so take a look at this. So find a line that's actually tangent at this line. My drawing is <laughs> being sabotaged by Freddy Krueger kind of streaks that come out. We talked about that joke before. So look, look how steep it is here. It got flatter here. It's even a flatter slope here. It's getting even flatter than here. Here it's almost like a straight line. Okay, so if you just trace through this indifference curve, you're going to see it getting flatter and flatter. So as we move down, move down along an indifference curve, Marginal rate of substitution, slope diminishes. What does it mean? That means, folks, right? What does the slope tell you? How many cakes are you willing to give up minus to gain one more movie? So as you have few movies here, you have fewer movies. As you have fewer movies, you're willing to give up a lot of cakes to get one more movie because you haven't seen any movies yet. But let's say you're here. You have already watched so many movies. Now you're willing to give up fewer cakes. It goes down. The amount of cakes you're willing to give up goes down as you consume more and more movies, which makes sense, right? I, I love diet soda, diet Coke, actually, Coke Zero. And I like to eat pizza, right? So let's say I'm eating uh, one, like four ounce. The cups are four ounce, tiny little Coke cups. I drink one Coke and I've been eating pizza, right? How many pizzas are you willing to give up to drink one more Coke? I'm very perched. So I'm willing to give up like you can eat the last, you know, four slices. I, I am going to, you know, I, I can give you, let's say, four slices of pizza for one more cup of tiny cup of Coke. But as you eat, drink more and more Coke, you're satisfied. I'm not willing to give up four slices of pizza. I'll give up maybe one, maybe even, you know, I don't want to give up too much half. Okay. So as you consume more and more of something, you're satiated, you're willing to give up less of the other good you're consuming to actually keep consuming one more unit. All right. So when she has few movies, right, she's willing to give up more cakes to get one more movie, bundle A. When she has a lot of movies already at point B, she's willing to give up less cakes to get one more movie because I've been watching so many movies already. So willing to give up a lot of cakes for another movie. Again, we are trying to increase what we have on the x-axis. How many cakes, whatever you have in the y-axis, are you willing to give up? I'm willing to give up a lot. It's a very steep slope. At point B, not willing to give up very many cakes for another movie because I've, I've already seen two movies. I mean, I don't need to see one more. But if I'm seeing one more, I'm not giving up a whole cake. Okay. At point D, even less willing to give up additional cakes here. Margin rate of substitution will tell you how many, whatever I have on the y-axis i am willing to give up to get one more unit of what i have on the x-axis and it's diminishing so let's talk about the direct relationship between marginal rate of substitution and marginal utility marginal rate of substitution slope of the indifference curve is equal to negative value of marginal utility from movies divided by marginal utility from cookies so it's always marginal rate of substitution is always just remember Minus of what you have, marginal utility on x-axis, whatever good you have, divided by marginal utility y-axis. I apologize for these little spikes that happens. I'm going to clean those up. So let's draw it in marginal utility y. 
Boom. Margin rate of substitution shows how the relative marginal utilities evolve over the indifference curve. And as a result, you know, we know that as you move towards the east, as you can see more and more what you have on the x-axis, margin rate of substitution diminishes. So let's derive this relationship graphically. I'm a very visual person. I need to see the math behind it graphics too so i'm going to actually do a hybrid i'm going to show you both the math and the graph so consider a movement from bundle a to bundle b we are on bundle a and we are going to move to bundle b okay so pay a lot of attention here moving from a to b does not change your utility right it, on a and on b you have the same level of happiness okay keep that in mind so as you move A to B, you actually make two movements, right? I mean, you're moving A to B, but you are decreasing your cake consumption from 2 to 1. So this is a change. And you're increasing your movies consumption from 1 to 2, okay? So how is that going to affect you, your uh, changes in utility? It's going to be easy. But movement down is a change in cakes. We're not going to do one unit. We're going to do it mathematically, right? Right. So it's delta change in QC. So this will be the change in your quantity of cakes consumed. Movement to across is going to be the change in movies. Okay, so that's going to be delta QM. I'm going to write it delta QC. Delta QC here. Delta QM, that's the quantity. Okay, so this is a negative number. Obviously, this is a positive number. When you put deltas, you don't need the signs. That's what we are doing. Okay, so loss of utility though, right? This is the utility plane. This, this whole graph is about utility, okay? So the loss of utility from less cakes is going to be, loss of utility from less cakes is going to be Whatever the change in your quantity of cakes times marginal utility of cakes. Marginal utility of cakes will give you the change in your utility when the cake consumption changes by one unit. Change, I'm saying, because it could be positive and negative. So this is the multiplication, right? I am consuming these fewer cakes and each cake affects my happiness by this unit. Okay. So there's also gain in utility. So you are consuming more movies. Okay. Gain from utility from more movies is this is the amount of more movies I'm getting times how many units of happiness. How does my units of happiness marginal utility increase by consuming one more movie? All right. One more unit or one less unit depending on the stuff. So. As a result, folks, you must have decrease in your utility from reduction in your cake consumption plus increase in your utility from movie consumption to be zero. Why? Because change in your overall utility. Remember this delta we use as a change operator. Okay. Delta U, U is equal to zero because we are on the same indifference curve. So if you rearrange these things, right, you rearrange this thing, you're going to see, you arrange that relationship, you're going to get that equality. So I'm going to rearrange this thing and calculate this, okay? So marginal utility C times change in quantity C plus marginal utility from movies. Change in quantity of movies. This needs to be equal to zero. Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, I'm going to leave MUC times delta QC on one side. And I'm going to throw this whole second term on the left hand, uh, right hand side. I'm sorry. So this moves to the other side with a negative sign. Marginal utility of M times change in quantity m okay cool 
What else? So what's the slope of this? What's the slope here, right? It's changing quantity of cakes divided by, so rise over run, right? Changing quantity of cakes. Of course, this is a, this is a curve. Therefore, we need to use calculus, but I'm going to just treat it for the simplicity as, um, as a discrete number, all right? So rise over run is the slope, delta QC over delta QM, okay? So I want to leave delta QC over delta QM on one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide everything by marginal utility of C times change in QM. So let's do that, marginal utility from cakes change in QM. So some things are going to cancel out. So this change in QM, they cancel out, cancel out. All right. They disappear here. So you have change in quantity of cakes divided by change in quantity of movies, which is equal to negative marginal utility of movies divided by marginal utility of cakes this is the slope this is marginal rate of substitution and slope of indifference curve this is how we find it so i'm going to show you what we had excuse me so we talked about this and remember, marginal rate of substitution, slope of the indifference curve, negative marginal utility of movies, divided by marginal utility from uh, cakes. And that's exactly what we found here. You don't need to memorize this derivation, but you need to know where it comes from. And, okay, so basically, that's pretty much it. I will see you in part three where we study budget constraints and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and hit the like button on this video, please. When you hit the like button, it actually gives you sparkles, which I love, but hit the like button because that's how the YouTube algorithm will push this video to other students who are either struggling or who are trying to do better in their courses and earn A's. So make sure you do that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.